God was attempting to wake up America because America has been shifting. I need five minutes. I need five minutes because I want to show you 9-11 in the Bible as well. Five minutes. I'm going to show you the details of everything that happened in 9-11. I want you to see them in the Word of God here. All right? Can I show you this? Okay. Go with me quickly to the book of Isaiah. Go with me quickly to the book of Isaiah. I should have asked somebody, give me a $20 bill, give me a fine. I could have had a good dinner afterwards, but that's all right. <laughs> Isaiah 9, verse number 8 through 13. What I want you to understand, the book of Isaiah is a book of prophecy. Isaiah was a, was a prophetic prophet. He writes by the, what is called the, the, the law of, du of double reference. That's what it's called in theology when we study um, hermeneutics which is the accurate interpretation of scripture, he writes under the inspiration of the law of double reference. So there is a reference in that present time, but there's also a tie of prophecy to, to a future event when this would be fulfilled as well. All right? Verse number 8, And the Lord sent the word into Jacob, and it has uh, lightened upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride... And stoutness of heart. The bricks are fallen down. But we will build with hew stones. The sycamores are cut down. But we will change them into cedar. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversities of resin against him. And join his enemies together. The Syrians before. The, the, the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For his anger is not turned away. His anger is what? It is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. For the people turn not unto him that smiteth them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. So God says he's going to allow this event to take place. And he's allowing this event to take place. Because he's wanting the people's hearts to turn back to God. God's saying, I'm going to allow this calamity. I'm going to allow it to turn back to God. And in that time, it was during the time that God was allowing the Assyrians to come and to attack Israel and to desecrate them, that they would turn back to Him. Guess what happened? They didn't turn back to them. So you know what happened? The ten tribes of Israel went into a period in time of bondage and slavery. They lost their land. They lost their authority. They lost their name. They lost their economics. They lost their power. They lost everything. Why? Because when God was warning them, they rejected God, but they wanted to keep the blessings of God. Now, I want you to consider that that happened at that point of history. But this, this was tied to prophetic scripture. And when you look at commentaries and you read commentaries, commentaries will tell you that there is a prophetic scripture. There's a prophetic event encouraged in this very scripture here. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know how it was. And they couldn't know until it would be fulfilled. But I want to look at the details of this here, of what happened. It says that the bricks were falling down. The bricks, two bricks. Those two bricks represent the Twin Towers. Stay with me here. And it says the bricks have been falling down. And it says as a result of the bricks falling down, it says that the people said, we will hewn new stones. And we will place them there. And then we will rebuild. I want you to think of that. When the Twin Towers collapsed, after they collapsed, you know what we did? We hewed out a huge stone of granite. Put up their slide number five. Slide number five, please. See that there? That's a monument sitting there where the Twin Towers were. So it says the bricks would fall. And what the people would do, they would hew out a stone and they would place it there. Well, pastor, isn't that a little coincidental? Isn't that kind of extreme? Yeah, that's what I kind of thought too. But let's look at that a little bit deeper. 
Let's see the rest of the description. Let's see the reps of the details. Because it says the rips, the, the, the bricks are falling down. It says, but we will build with huge stones. It says the sycamores are cut down. The sycamore. Now wait a minute here. Sycamore tree? A sycamore tree? When the north tower was hit and it collapsed, part of that shrapnel shot across uh, uh, right, right across the field and there was a sycamore tree that was there ladies and gentlemen now those are from Israel there was one there in New York it hit the sycamore tree tore the sycamore tree in half and you know what we did we took the remains of the sycamore tree and we preserved them and we placed them there and as, a, as a monument, put me up that uh, slide number six, please. Slide number six. That's right there. That's, just, that's the remains of the sycamore. And it, and it says that, recorded, that that was a symbol of our perseverance. That even though our sycamore tree was, was torn in half, we were able to preserve it. Now, now isn't that profound? Wait a minute here. The bricks are falling down we will hew a stone we hewn the stone of granite there and we place it there as a monument it says the sycamore tree the sycamore tree was there we have preserved it but it also says one more thing so it's got to fulfill the fourth one if it's got to be 9-11 what does it say let's let's look at that let's see what it says there they were cut down, but we will change them into cedars. So it says that where the sycamore tree was, the sycamore tree would be removed, and the sycamore tree would be replaced with a cedar tree. Well, here's the astounding thing. When they removed the sycamore tree, when they removed it, the Hebrew word there. And that, that's how detailed God is. This is how detailed God is. When this event happened, the Hebrew word for cedar is eres in Greek. Eres in Greek. And when you translate that Hebrew word eres, you, and you translate that to English, it is a, a conifer tree. A cedar conifer tree. Arrest is the Hebrew word. And it's translated as conifer. Did you know what kind of tree they put there? They put a conifer tree there. The exact Hebrew word in the Bible that it says. Put me up the scripture. Give me the script. There it is right there. See that? That's a cedar conifer tree. That's where the sycamore tree once was. That's where it was. So 9-11 was couched within the scriptures but it said the people they didn't turn back what happened after 9-11 were people going to church were people praying were people stirred yeah they were stirred but the enemy was at work the enemy was at work this message isn't for the world this is for the church to wake up to get consecrated to get prepared for what's getting ready to happen now I'm closing I'm closing this is my goal today. My goal is today. If you're not consecrated, get, get focused and quit being so distracted with the vanities of this life, folks. Quit being so distracted. You can't be faithful to the house of God. You can't be diligent. You can't invest this in your children. It's time to do that. If you're not born again, you got to get born again here today. You got to get born again here today. And in that process of being born again, you've got to go down and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got to do it. You've got to apply the name. If you haven't gone down in the name of Jesus, you've got to get baptized today. I don't care if you've been baptized in any other formula or any other way. I'm asking you to do it the way the Bible says it. I'm asking you to do it the way the, to the one that you confess to. You confess to Jesus. I'm asking you to get baptized in his name. That he can fill you with his spirit and you may have his spirit. But you've got to get his name. Why is that? Because in these end times, the name of the Lord is what this, the strong tower. The righteous will run into and they will be safe.
It's going to be the name. It's going to make us safe. you got to get that name in your life. Now on top of all of this that has happened, 9-11 and all this America and all these different things here that took place after September 11th took place, the next day, September 12th, Congress assembled together and Senator Tom Dassel addressed Congress. He had no idea the words that he was getting ready to say. But I want you to see or hear for yourself what he said. Go ahead and show that video real quick, and then we'll be done. Show that video when you get a chance. I, I told him to fast forward. I don't want to... Nothing can replace the losses of those that have suffered. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. We will rebuild and we will recover. The people of America will stand strong together because the people of America have always stood together. And those of us privilege to serve this great nation will stand with you. God bless the people of America. I yield the floor. I want you to, I want you to hear real, his words, what he said. He says, we will rebuild. And he said, we will return. We, he, what he didn't say was, we will return. He didn't say, we will return. He said, we're going to rebuild. He said, we will be renewed. But he didn't say, we will return. The Bible tells us, in Revelation 12, God's design for America, that America would be separate from that global institution. In Revelation 13, you did not see America, the eagle's wings, in that entity. One or two things are going to happen to America. America is going to return because there's going to be a sweeping revival and we're going to be an institution that we are restored back to in God we trust. For that to take place, people have to get their priorities right. And people have to be renewed. Why? Because it's time to shine as the brightness. And it's time to convert many to righteousness. I don't think it's impossible for God to do his best in, in, in midst of an environment that seems impossible. But he's only going to do it through a people that have committed themselves and consecrated themselves for them to see it done. This is what the Bible says, and I'm closing with this here. I apologize for going a little longer today, but it, it all needed to be tied together. Revelation 12, verse number 12 says, Therefore... Rejoice ye heavens and you that dwell in them, but woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. In other words, as the time progresses and he knows that his time is decreasing in his opportunity to advance evil and destruction. As he sees that, advance, that, that time shorten, he becomes more aggressive. And the dragon saw, and he was cast unto the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. The woman is Israel. The child is Jesus. It's talking about the birth of Jesus. That when Jesus was born, the, the Roman government put an edict to try to kill Jesus. So it was the serpent that was trying be, to be used to kill the child Jesus. And that was opposed to the woman which was Israel. Watch this. And to the woman were given, watch this, two wings of what? A great eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nervous for a time, times, half a times, 
from the face of the serpent. Now that's a whole message in itself, the time times half a times, because it equates to the three and a half years of the great tribulation. But it says that the destiny of America is tied in supporting Israel all the way to the end. And if America stays beside Israel, America will not be destroyed. Now with all that we have heard here today, it was sobering to consider the graphic details of our conception as a nation and the forewarnings of God that he has provided. I'm asking us today that we would internalize this message today and we would commit ourselves to be a voice to the people that God has assigned to us. The people that are assigned to us at school, the people that are assigned to us at work, the people that we consider our friends and families, that we can be a voice. Because the worst thing that we can do to anybody is not tell them. To withhold this information and know it. Noah did not withhold the information. Noah built that ark. His boys built that ark. They weren't distracted with the things of this world. They didn't have their own agendas. They had God's agendas. And I want you to understand this here. The Bible says when Noah heard of the destruction, he heard of the destruction because the scripture says that Noah found grace in the sight of God. And when you hear this prophecy and you hear this information, it is God giving you grace. But it wasn't grace that saved Noah it was his, his obedience to building the ark because if he didn't build the ark he'd have drowned with all the rest of them so God is extending his grace today but it's going to be your obedience to the gospel and your obedience to godliness that's going to save you let's all stand